welcome to another edition of Rum Traveler at Home Live. So as you guys know, we're all still under a stay-at-home order. So here we are at home, another Friday night. And tonight, we are going to be making a zombie cocktail. Uh, so this is one of my favorite cocktails. Uh, we've definitely stepped it up a notch here. Um, as you guys can see, we've got a whole bar full of ingredients to work with. Um, takes a little bit of extra preparation, uh, but this is an amazing cocktail. Uh, so this is a uh, classic tiki cocktail. Uh, it was invented by Don Beachcomber in 1934, I believe. Um, it was rediscovered uh, by Beach Bum Berry. He found the recipe for it and figured out uh, some of those you know, special ingredients that we've got here in front of us. And uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to uh, teaching you guys how to make this. Here comes Joe. Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. It's been a long week for sure. All right guys, so I know uh, last time we talked a lot about ingredients ahead of time, um, but we've got a lot of work to do as you guys can see. So we're going to kind of dive right in and we'll just talk about what we're using kind of as we're putting this together because um, this is a complex cocktail. It does take a little while to make and I know we're all very eager to have our uh, Friday night cocktail. Is that right? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, this is a very, like she said, very complex cocktail. A lot of ingredients, some of them we even made at home. So we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, we have a couple videos on YouTube you can watch or on Facebook. But uh, yeah, let's get into making the drink. All right, so first off, I want to give props to um, this book right here. If you guys can't see that, that says Smuggler's Cove. And Smuggler's Cove is a, uh, I don't know if you want to call them a tiki bar or a rum bar. They're kind of somewhere in between, uh, but they're in San Francisco. And it's a great, great establishment. They've got some amazing rums there, so they've got some really yummy cocktails too. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use the zombie recipe right out of this book. We're also, uh, as Joe mentioned, some of the ingredients here we did have to prepare for ourselves. So uh, we're using the recipes for those uh, from the Smuggler's Cove book as well. And uh, it's a pretty long list of ingredients here. So uh, I'm gonna have this behind me. I am not gonna try to remember this. Yeah, we're gonna cheat a little bit. So. <laughs> The, this isn't a daiquiri, as you guys can see. This is a, a whole other animal, but I'm excited. Um, so yeah, this, this cocktail, another thing to mention about it, um, if you guys have ever been to uh, you know, a classic TV bar and seen a zombie on the menu, um, sometimes the menu will say limit two per person. They're strong cocktails. That's an understatement. <laughs> um, so we're going to put this cocktail together. It's going to have four ounces of rum in it. Uh, one of those rums is going to be an overproof rum. So... Three ounces of even better. Yeah, even better. Three <laughs> ounces of you know regular rum and another ounce of overproof. So probably a good idea to limit yourself to two unless you're um, you know you got a lot of time and you're not going anywhere. Well, none of us are going anywhere. So <laughs> got plenty of time. To drink some zombies at home. That's for sure. All right. So let's start mixing up a drink here. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so uh, quick, quick, basic setup here with our tools. Um, we are going to make these in uh, shaker cups. Um, we're going to use a special little device here. Now, now the book calls for a drink mixer, um, and we don't have one of those. We weren't able to you know, order one and get it shipped here in time, so we have the next best thing, which is like a handheld uh, blender. Because uh, this drink, it's not a blended drink, uh, but we are going to do like a flash blend on it, and that's going to aerate the drink. Um, it's going to kind of dilute the ice, uh, melt the ice a little bit to dilute the cocktail. It's going to chill it all at one time. Um, if you guys see, we kind of, we practiced for you because this is so complicated. We don't want to screw it up. Um, so we made one ahead of time. You can see it's, you know, getting a little watered down now, but you can see it's kind of frothy on the top. So that's one cool thing that this, uh, this hand blender, or if you have a drink mixer, um, that that will do for you. Uh, if you don't have a, um, a drink mixer or a hand blender, you can use a regular blender. You just want to only like, you know, pulse it for, you know, a, a second or two, just real quick. It's not meant to, to puree it or, or turn yeah. it into a frozen you're not, Yeah, you're like not that. making pina coladas or strawberry daiquiris. It's a zombie. All you want to do is break down the ice a little bit and make sure it's nice and blended and get that nice froth developed on top. So. All right, so here we go. Everybody ready? And um, so you don't have to write, everybody doesn't have to write this down afterwards. I will put the, uh, the full recipe and the quantities on our post um, once we uh, share the video afterwards. So. Uh, if you miss anything, just feel free to uh, check back later and get those exact quantities. But I'll try to say it a couple of times so that everybody, everybody gets it. So why don't you start getting the uh, different bottles ready. I'm going to get our fresh fruit juice ready. All right. Perfect. And I'll cut up some limes. All right. So um, 
Normally I like to start with the rum, but I'm going to follow the recipe as it is in the book. We're going to put the rum in last. Um, so the first couple ingredients are our juices. Um, so we have two kinds of juices. We have uh, lime juice, which Joe's putting together for us. Um, you guys saw from our previous videos, I really like to have uh, fresh lime juice. There is nothing quite like that. Matter of fact, didn't you just pour out all of our bottled lime juice from the store? I did. I was making some room in our cocktail fridge and I saw we had an old bottle of uh, like that sweetened lime juice. I'm like, why do we have this? This is gross. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Now we just, we, we don't need that anymore. We've learned, we've, we've grown up, we've learned. <laughs> um, so we also want to use uh, some grapefruit juice in this. Um, so this is uh, Indian River produce. This is great, as, fresh, as close as we can get to fresh grapefruit. Um, grapefruit's kind of getting to be out of season here in Florida. Um, so we did buy a, a, a bottle of grapefruit juice, but we made sure to pick something. You want something that's 100% juice. You don't want one of those like, 5% juice and 95% sugar you want. You want the good stuff. All right, so I believe this is, this is gonna be a quarter ounce of grapefruit juice. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention to you, you guys saw earlier, um, I held up two cups. So I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna like double the ingredients and make it in one cup. Uh, just because of the way this cocktail is prepared, I wanna make sure we get the exact right ingredients into each individual cocktail. So I'm gonna make them separately here. So if it takes me a little longer, that's fine. I'm a little slow, as you guys have seen. All right, so quarter ounce of our grapefruit juice into each of these. And uh, also, I didn't mention, uh, I'm gonna put the ice into those shakers last, because um, it takes a little while to put this together. There's a lot of ingredients. Uh, but I don't want the... Then I'm gonna get watered down while you're adding ingredients. Exactly. All right, so we've got our quarter ounce of grapefruit juice. Our lime juice is going to be um, three quarters three of an ounce. There's a lot, a lot more lime juice in this, which is good. I'm not a huge fan of grapefruit juice. I'm more of a lime juice kind of gal. All right. So we've got three quarters of an ounce there. So the cinnamon syrup we made uh, earlier this week, like she said, we um, made it with all ingredients you can get at home. A couple of cinnamon sticks. What is it? Three cinnamon sticks. Mm -hmm. um, just granulated sugar and uh, and water. You boil the water with the sugar, add the sugar, put in the cinnamon sticks, and dissolve it until the um, sugar is pretty much clear at that point. Uh, then you let it sit for it was twelve hours. Twelve hours. You have it sit and then uh, what? Bottle it and put it in the fridge. Make sure you uh, refrigerate it, it'll last forever. Ah, eh, months. <laughs> Not forever. But anyway, um, I believe we need a quarter ounce of the cinnamon syrup. Yep, that's right. And this stuff it's works. a slow pour. Oh, it's a little <laughs> better. And when I took it right out of the fridge, it was a, a little thick, so it's warmed up a little bit. Makes it a little easier to pour. And this stuff smells amazing, by the way. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I've never really seen like a cinnamon syrup that you could buy in the store. Um, but really, there's no reason to. It was so easy to make this. Um, that you guys, you know, it's three ingredients that you probably already have in your house. Other than uh, the part where you wait for it to set overnight, 12 hours, it really didn't take very long. I mean, it's no. just waiting for the water to boil, and that's it. It's like five minutes. Uh, uh, not even five minutes. So the next ingredient is going to be our grenadine, which we also made here at home the other night. Um, it's going to be one teaspoon of vinegar, or I'm sorry, one tablespoon of vinegar. Nope. Uh, teaspoon. Yep. Teaspoon. Oh yeah, you sure do have a teaspoon there. I do bake as well. This is <laughs> oh, yes, one teaspoon. That is my fault. So yes, uh, we made the grenadine as well the other night, which is also just granulated sugar and pomegranate juice. If you guys watch the video, uh, you'll you'll remember that I really literally just learned this week that grenadine is made from pomegranate juice. I had only ever had that, you know, red syrupy stuff that you buy in the store, and I always thought it was cherry. Um, it kind of, that artificial stuff tastes to me like, like a cherry. Um, mm -hmm. But really, this, 
pomegranate juice does not cost very much. Um, you use so very little of it to make this. Um, sugar is very inexpensive, so there's just no reason to buy that bread stuff in the store anymore. Um, I think this is actually less expensive and took less than five minutes to make. No high fructose corn syrup in there. That's right. All right. So she'll pour that. And that's a uh, one teaspoon. Teaspoon. Very important not to mix those up. You're you don't want to over sweeten the cocktail. You want to have that balanced flavor. Uh, while she's pouring that last little bit of grenadine in there, we'll start talking about one of our other homemade ingredients we're going to add to this. Um, this will be one of the last things we add to the cocktail. It's a, it's a bitters, basically. Um, so it's Herb Saint, which is a little bit of a challenge to find, and Angostura bitters. And basically, you add it in the bottle, you mix it. It's uh, equal parts of those two items. And you use it like a bitters. You actually dash it into the drink. So we'll add that on top a little bit later. All right, so let's see. Let's see. I gotta check the recipe. Don't want to mess this up. Okay, the falernum is next. Uh, hopefully, you guys are familiar with uh, falernum. We have the um, the John T. Taylor. Is that correct? John D. 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 Taylor. If you get his name right. Um, but this is the falernum. This is made in Barbados. Uh, this is the falernum that you want. Um, it's a classic. This has been around for a very, very long time. Um, so it's like it's a liqueur. Um, it's lime, essentially lime flavored. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there might be a few other um, like rum companies that make this. I think Maggie's Farm had one. Um, yeah, we so. um, But here we want a uh, half ounce. Let me make sure I have short term memory loss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, half ounce of Palermo. I think you can make your own Palermo too, but you know, we. We're already in a little over our heads here, so we don't want to try to get into that. We'll let the experts make the Falernum for Maybe us. that'll be a future Rome Traveler at Home video. Take care of Falernum. All right. There we go. Okay, I think the rum's next. I think yep. we're finally there. Yes. <laughs> we're ready for the rum. Ready for the rum. <laughs> All right. Um, so the first one that we're going to use um, is our door leaves. Do you want to tell us about door leaves? Yeah, so door leaves is made in Barbados uh, by Foursquare. It's a blended rum, uh, pot and column, and you want a blended rum for this cocktail, for the zombie. Uh, a lot of people will recommend a Jamaican rum, but we did a couple cocktails with Jamaican rums already, so we wanted to give Barbados a little bit of love in this one. So we're going to do the Dorley's 12-year. Uh, we have an XO, but we're going to go with the 12-year because the blend should be nice and balanced for this drink. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is available at Total Wine, uh, so if you guys have one of those nearby in Florida, this is readily available. Um, if it's not in your Total Wine, you should be able to order it. And this is not very expensive, um, so if it's a four-square product, they have some really premium rums out there that are, you know, get to be a little more expensive. Uh, we're making a cocktail with this, so we don't need to use the, the top-tier rum. Um, I think the Dorley's runs between $20 and $25 for this yeah, bottle. This is much excellent much. rum. Very good rum. And uh, the other thing is, a lot of these videos that we do, we try to find those rums that are readily available, but again, are very close to the, the flavors, the taste, the original intent of the cocktails when they were made, you know, decades ago. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, the amazing rums that they had way back then, um, some of those like really incredible Jamaican rums, the, the Ray and Nephew 17 year rum comes to mind. like. I don't think, I think maybe, I think Martin Kate, he's the owner of Smothers Cove, he's the author of the book that, um, of the recipe here that we're using. Um, I think he might have a bottle somewhere, but I mean, really it just doesn't exist anymore. So we have to adapt these recipes a little bit to, um, you know, to, to what's available today. Uh, so Joe is using an ounce and a half. Yep. That's one and a half ounces of this rum. So we, we told you guys there's a lot of rum in here, we weren't kidding. Why don't you talk about the next rum we're going to add as well? Absolutely. All right. So next up, um, for this one, you want a, um, an aged column still rum. So uh, this is a blend of pot and column still, so a little bit of a, yeah, a little heavier style, a little more full body. Um, for the next ingredient, we want to use a lighter style of rum, more of that like Spanish style column rum. And we selected uh, Don Cú from Puerto Rico, and we've got the Gran Añejo here. Uh, so we could, they also have an Añejo, it's a younger rum, we certainly could have used that. Um, but we wanted to, you know, just kind of fancy it up a little bit. Uh, so we chose our, our Gran Añejo. This is readily available too. You should be able to find this in just about any liquor store. Um, I think it runs between $50 and $60, depending where you are. Um, yeah, and like, like she said, you could pretty much substitute any aged column still rum for that right flavor. 
Um, of course, this is a Spanish-style rum. Uh, you can pretty much use any column rum. If uh, you find a column from St. Lucia or uh, you know from one of the other islands, if columns they have uh, straight column stills from uh, Barbados, I believe, mean, too. Uh, yeah, I think uh, one of those distilleries might be doing that. So let's go ahead and pour. I believe this is one and a half ounces yes. as well. So, so same as the blended rum, uh, we want one and a half ounces of our column still. This is a really pretty bottle too, I think. Does it still do where, um, so it's got this neat little top and I think, I think they still work. Uh, it's got a little hole in there. And so if you've got the cork and the top on this, you can turn the bottle upside down. It's gonna fill up this bottom here. Um, and then it kind of makes a little, it's like a little shot glass for you. So well, not a shot glass, but it pours in an ounce. An ounce, of the yeah. So we'll just yeah. let it go while we're uh, finishing, we're continuing the video here. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right, one more. I'm going to talk yeah. about Lemonheart. So the Lemonheart is going to be our overproof rum. Uh, the recipe calls for a Demerara black rum, which uh, Demerara rums come from Guyana, from uh, De Demerara distilleries. Uh, the Lemonheart has been around for a long, long time. So we chose to go with the Lemonheart 151 because it fit the description that was needed for the cocktail, has great flavor, and uh, I think it's going to make this cocktail delicious. All right, it's going to be one ounce of our 151. So a, a little lighter on the 151 because this is overproof. I already have three ounces of rum in there. Don't want to overdo it. Oh, no, no. Four, four ounces, that, that's, that seems about right. That's not overdoing it. All right, good stuff. Okay, the only thing left before we have the ice is our homemade... Oh, the bitters, yeah, yep. yeah. So let, uh, this is- Let's this, talk about this a little bit. Yeah, so um, this is something that Don the Beachcomber came up with, um, which really just to add some body to this cocktail, some complexity that you don't necessarily get from the individual juices. Um, so he figured out that if you combine uh, these Angostura bitters, these are just your normal, regular Angostura bitters, and, which has all kinds of spices and, and stuff in there, you smell it, it's, a little overwhelming, you certainly wouldn't want to like, drink that. Just yeah, most little... of the time you put a couple dashes in there and that's all you need to bring some flavor to the drink. Yep. Um, use them in old fashions and a lot of different tiki cocktails. Yeah, it helps balance the sweet. Um, so then uh, the other half of it is this stuff, which I've never heard of before. It's called Herb Saint. And uh, it is, it's, it says it's the spirit of New Orleans. Now, been to New Orleans a lot, it's actually my favorite city, and I would say they probably there's probably a lot of spirits of New Orleans, mm -hmm. right? Like <laughs> you guys that have been there, there's there's no shortage of spirits there in New Orleans. And everything claims to be some type of spirit of New Orleans. They do. <laughs> uh, but th this is it's made by Sazerac Company. Um, they're in in, uh, in Louisiana, and uh, this has been around for a really long time too. Uh, this was introduced as a substitute for absinthe. Uh, so back in the day when they outlawed absinthe because they thought it made people crazy, people hallucinating. Thought it made people hallucinating. Which it didn't. Yeah. It was just, they were probably just... Depends like, on who you talk to. <laughs> um, but, so it's, um, it, it's a similar uh, flavor profile to absinthe. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure exactly, other than being like a liqueur, I don't know exactly how they make this. We'll have to do a little <laughs> research on that. Um, Obviously it, it just arrived today for us to make the cocktail, so we still need to learn about it a little bit. It did, but, uh, but if you smell it, uh, so it smells like absinthe. It's like that at least flavor. Uh, so if you don't have this very obscure thing, which we could not find in any stores here, um, I ordered it off of wine.com. Uh, but if you can't find it, um, some of your liquor stores might be able to uh, to order it. It is from Sazerac, so if they have a connection there, they should be able to order this. Uh, but if you want to make this drink tonight and you don't have this, uh, you can use any like anise absinthe flavored product. Uh, so yeah. Pernod is a popular one. You might have that in your bar. Um, if you do have some absinthe, that will work. Uh, and <laughs> Joe, Joe's idea, I said no, but go ahead. It's not the best idea, but if you're really lacking for, for an idea to, to use as a substitute, uh, Sambuca at least has the right flavor. It's probably not going to work the same way, but uh, you can give it a try and see what happens. Yeah. Alright, so enough about that, but basically what this does, if you smell this, like it's just, it's a, it's a bouquet of spices and flavors, and uh, it's just going to really add that extra dimension to the Sambu cocktail. So it's two dashes. And you see, basically you just do uh, two quick dashes. You don't want too much in there. So that's pretty much all you need. Yep. That adds a lot of flavor with a little bit of effort. Good stuff. Okay, 
So, whoo, is everybody exhausted? I'm exhausted. That is a lot of ingredients. Um, but I promise yeah. you guys it is worth it. This pack looks so good. So definitely props to the bartenders that make this uh, yeah. you know like on a regular basis because this is a lot of work for, for you know a couple of drinks. Yep. So yep. go ahead and let's get our ice together. We're using crushed ice because it's going to, to chill the drink faster. It's also going to allow our blender to froth and, and uh, blend the cocktail nicely. It's not going to be like chunk ice where it would take a while to blend it down. So one, Sorry, cup, the, the one and a half cups-ish of, uh, of ice. Why do you think that's going to be loud? Wait till I turn on the blender. Oh yeah, you guys better turn your sound <laughs> out for that one. But, um, so now we've got the ice in there, basically to take our blender. Okay, I just want to point out, like, for the, so this isn't an arbitrary measurement. I'm not using an ice scoop, I'm actually using a measuring cup. Um, because this does call for 12 ounces of fresh ice. Uh, so that's a cup and a half if you want to use a measuring cup like I did. Uh, but it's important to get the right amount of ice because we're not going to strain this or anything. It's going to go right into the glass. So you don't want to put like a gallon of ice in there and then it will fit in your cup. So 12 ounces is what you need. All right. Go. So if you have this tool, it's basically a very, you just set it right at the top of the ice, hit the button and go straight down to the bottom and then you're done. Pull, pull it right back out. That's all you need to do. You'll get a nice froth on it and uh, do it one more. And then you're ready to pour into your glass. And our glasses, so this cocktail is so famous that it even has its own glass. It's called a zombie glass. Looks more or less like this. Um, so you want to have just a tall, thin, you know, skinny glass here. And like I said before, we're just going to pour, pour it all in. We're done. Almost done. There we go. Um, now we do, if you guys notice on our setup here, we've got these cute little zombie head tiki mugs. Um, a lot of times this drink will be served in a tiki mug if you're in a traditional tiki bar. Um, but you know, if you want to go classic style, it would be in this kind of cup. So we also need a straw for our nice tall cups. We're using stainless steel, help the environment. And you're going to garnish with a sprig of mint. And you're doing your, your slap, your famous yep. slap. Wakes up the mint. Yep, wakes up the oils in the mint, gives you that smell. So, All right, guys. here's our completed zombie. It's going to be good. Let's taste it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Quite nice. Quite Ooh. nice. And That's pretty good. This is the kind of cocktail, like, you, you know, you get it in your mouth and you kind of taste it, but, like, the longer it's in there, you kind of, you know, savor it. You swallow it. It's like a rum. It has like this finish. So after you swallow it, more and more flavors keep coming. Like the, the absinthe flavor of this guy is coming through. I'm tasting some of the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I'm tasting some of the bitters. Yeah, it's complex. It's not one taste in your mouth and then you're done. It's, it keeps opening up as, you know, after you've swallowed it, it just keeps on coming, bringing you different flavors. It's the drink that keeps on giving. <laughs> and the smell of the mint also yeah, you know, for complements sure. the drink as well. Yeah, I mean, they say a, a, a lot of your, your your sense of taste actually is coming from your sense of smell. That's why we always, when we taste rum, we always smell it for a while before we taste it. Um, it gives your, you know, your, your taste buds a lot of cues about what that's going to be, what it's going to taste like. So yeah, the mint definitely adds that to it. So this is our cocktail for the evening. Hope you guys are able to follow along. Um, we're happy to answer any questions you have. If you guys want to put them in the, the comments there, mm -hmm. we'll uh, take a quick scan, see if you have any comments or if you just have feedback, if you think we're awesome, we like to hear that. Who <laughs> doesn't like to hear that? Quite a few, few people watching online right now. So uh, yeah, it looks like um, we do have a question from Dimitri. Hey, Dimitri, what's up? Hi, Harry. <laughs> He was asking if we can use another citrus juice instead of grapefruit. Um, you know, you, you could. You, you sound like you're like me and not a big fan of grapefruit. Um, or maybe there's an allergy that, that could be it too. Um, I mean, you, you could. I think they're going with, with the grapefruit because it's not as sweet as like a pineapple. Yeah, it's more bitter. So I wouldn't go really any sweeter than like maybe orange juice. Even that's yeah. a little too sweet. Um, we used a uh, red grapefruit. Uh, I think the recipe just said grapefruit, which is your, your classic uh, grapefruit. But we used the red because it was, well, number one, it's local. It's yeah, any it's, river grapefruit juice, so, uh, you know, it's um, yeah, juiced locally. But yeah, um, 
I'm not sure about other juices. If anybody else has a recommendation on what you could substitute for grapefruit juice, let us know. We'll put it out in the uh, comments after the video. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you could use a pineapple juice. It's just going to make it a little bit sweeter, but I don't think it's, it's a, such a small amount, too. It's only a quarter ounce of that. So even if you do swap out something else that you like better, um, you know, go for it. It's not going to it's not gonna ruin your cocktail, mm -hmm. for sure. And I, I definitely encourage people to tweak these recipes. If there's an ingredient here that you don't like, like maybe you have a cinnamon aversion, right? Like if you have some awful cinnamon liqueur in college and you don't want to drink that anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Swap it out. Pick another spice. You know, you could kick... Um, I don't know. All spice. All spice, or, or, clove, you know, you could pick yeah. something like that and make a syrup out of that and then give it a try. There are no wrong answers in cocktails, I think. You know, it's up to everybody's personal preference. And if you don't want to make the uh, grenadine out of pomegranate juice and you want to buy the store bought, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just we prefer to have something that's a little more classic with the original recipe was supposed to be yep. and uh, no high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had a question from Paul Marchant. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Love he, having a talk. he asked, what are we drinking while we are making the drinks? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. So I told you we made a practice one ahead of time because we had a lot of new things happening. So, um, yeah, I was drinking We that. were sipping on that. <laughs> Once we started talking, we pretty much stopped. We aren't really sipping on anything while we're talking. So yep. um, now, we're, now we are. Now we've got some zombies. So <clears throat> let's see if we have any more questions in the uh, comments here. A lot of people watching. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this fabulous Friday night. Had a comment from Jay. Uh, Dorley's is a great deal. Total wine exclusive in the U.S. Ah. Very good to know. Yeah, if you can yes. find the Dorley's, it's definitely something you want to have on your shelf if you're a rum collector or a rum drinker. Yeah, you really, you can't go wrong with mm. this rum. Um, it's well made. Um, it, it's aged in bourbon barrels. Um, it's got this nice oaky, complex flavor to it. And it is so incredibly inexpensive. I think people in Europe, like, a lot of times we're jealous of the rums that they get over there in Europe and we can't get our hands on, but this is one we can kind of brag to them and say, ha ha, we got this in America and we love this one. Um, so it's great and it's so inexpensive. Like I said, I, I can't remember exactly the price that it was under $25. I mean, that's, you can't beat that. And Paul Margent did chime in and say grapefruit is a no-go for people who have uh, certain medical conditions. Ah, so. gotcha some heart medications, that type of thing. Makes sense. So that, yeah, if you want to substitute, yeah, just find a juice that you think might taste good. And do like a, a sample run, make a cocktail with a different kind of juice and see how it goes. Yep, yep. Um, looks like Dimitri is about to go make some Mai Tais from last week's ah, right. episode. So. Yes, we do. Uh, if you go out on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, uh, we did post the Mai Tai from last week and the daiquiri from weeks ago. But all right. Any I other think, questions? Are we wrapping it up? I think we've got through all the questions. Uh, again, thank you guys all for tuning in and joining yes. us on our Friday night. Um, we have fun. We always have fun doing this because we never know what's going to happen. We're doing this live. We don't do any rehearsals ahead of time. We just kind of go and see. We are not happens. bartenders. No, we're not. <laughs> we are such so, amateurs, so we have to check the recipe. So we appreciate you bearing with us while we figure it all out. And, uh, so. Um, Thank you guys again. Uh, I think we're going to log off and join some, our friends' happy hours and drink our zombies. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens next week, what kind of cocktail we're going to try. And yeah, we haven't picked out a cocktail for next week. So if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to uh, put it in the comments, send us a message, an email, however you like to do it. Uh, we're open to suggestions. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave you and let Missy close us out. But thank you guys. Yes. Joe's still my tech guy. He uh, controls all the videos, so you just have to look at me for the last few seconds. But yes, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.